Talking with James Earl Jones, I hope, did we send an, a big enough car for you today up and wherever you live that we won't reveal? Um, I could have brought the, the horse and, and, and the chickens and the pigs and that. And, and the Knicks. Car. And the Knicks, right. <laughs> yeah, <I know>. Long-legged. <laughs> yeah, I could have, yeah. They have this car that a gangster would find in poor taste. It's so long and luxurious. It's almost embarrassing. And what if the revolution broke out when you're sitting in a 20-foot long limo? <laughs> I guess they thought you well, wanted Salvatore to... is a good driver, so I think you'd be, you'd be fairly safe with him. They thought you might have wanted to lie down in various places in it. I, I, I saw that. Uh, you made an interesting observation about the car. In, in profile, it looks like the male member. But and erect. I think the new Ford penis with all the... Uh, I mean, I can see this would be a good parody commercial idea. Fully extended, yeah. James, before... Um, is there anybody who doesn't know that you are a voice that everybody knows in one sense... Um, do you ever just for fun in the back of an elevator talk as uh, Darth Vader? No, I, I've would... only done it once. It was, I, was, I was driving across country uh, with a CB radio, and I, uh -huh. and I used Darth Vader <laughs> as my handle. Freaked a lot of people out, you know. When it got to the, the truck stop, it was kind of a, there was a buzz about it, you know. So th I decided not, not, not to do that anymore. Are there people who don't have enough ear to know that you are Darth Vader? I mean, you're the voice of... Uh, oh, sure. Uh, yeah. I didn't know that Charlton was doing uh, this uh, This is uh, CNBC until he, I was told. Because yeah. it was a very particular choice he made. Uh, and not, not that he's trying to disguise his voice or, or any more than I do, but th th they're just choices you make. He kind of uh, acts it. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't play with it. I'm lucky that it, it comes out enough to talk to you right now. I have no presumptions or no arrogance about my voice, you know. You one would think that I might even be in love with my voice. I'm not, because it, it, it would be the most unfaithful uh, lover I, I ever had, because it fails me often. How? Because I'm a stutter, because I, not only a stutter, I, uh, be, being a stutter for that long in, in, my, in my developing years, yeah. I can't have a, an extemporaneous conversation. That is, I cannot be an, an MC, for instance. It's impossible for me. I can't string ideas and words together that well. Some of the very best people are stutterers, and I haven't heard you stutter. Oh, that's that's because you you accept it. It's, it's sort of a. Uh, well, maybe I'm maybe I'm erasing it mentally because no, it's, uh, I like you and I don't. Marlon you. Brando made, made made the American speech stutterable. You know, he made he made the halt and all that Hesitation very fashionable. Was acceptable. That's yeah. Now. now, this gets into a delicate subject, and I haven't forgotten the story I was going to tell. I hope. Uh, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, one of the roles you've always wanted to play that presumably isn't open to you is the fabulous part of Big Daddy, which uh, the late Burl Ives, recently late, yeah. played. Yeah. Now we get into that whole question of that nonsense that happened when Miss Saigon came here. And a bunch of misguided people didn't want a white man playing an Asian. Why didn't an Asian get to play? You know, it? they used to say what, whatever door is the rustiest or oh, squeaks the, the most gets the oil. Gets the it was whatever people who were in the most pain gets the protest, you know, and that, as yeah. simple as that. And, and sometimes the protest is totally irrelevant. Well, what's totally, art got to do with democracy? Uh, it's an aristocracy. The only aristocracy you can defend is the one of talent. If you want to and deal, the best person gets the part. Right. Period. But if you want to deal with pain, unemployment pain, look at the Asian community in terms of uh, jobs on Broadway, off-Broadway, movies, TV. Look, you know, if you hear blast complaining, well, I, yeah, or I, I feel, yeah, because and what do they got to look for? I mean, the, the Mikado doesn't even employ real right, yeah, Asians because yeah. it was written to be played by English. Yeah. But yeah, that that. But the idea that I think I said in my nasty letter to the Times, did Burton get to do Hamlet because there were no Danes out of work? Uh, you know, um, it just doesn't apply to art. The director can have anyone he no. wants. God, God, but God if you played big. The late Diana Sands once said that uh, that she probably had as much a grip on uh, uh, Chekhov's ladies that, that, uh, as Kim Stanley did, you know. And true, culturally, sure. she understood them the same way that Kim did. Yeah, just didn't look quite the, the Russian. Did. Are you saying that if you played a, a white man like Big Daddy, that after a few lines, people would just be overcome by the acting and forget about the fact? That I would hope so, but I wouldn't trust it. I've also wanted to play uh, well, um, Ernest Hemingway. Yeah. I think there you owe the audience the look. And I get the best makeup artist I get, I get fine, you know. What do you think of Olivier's Othello? I just saw a bit of it the other night. It's wonderful. And why did all the little pissant British critics leap all over him for that? Because he was daring, but I think that the, the, I think what they missed was the, they should have busted Frank Finley for his Iago. <laughs> you know, it was a piece of crap, really. You know? Yeah. But I mean, total. Is that total, a negative assessment? Please don't friend? believe me, you know? <laughs> yeah. 
which, which was Chris Plummer's uh, choice too. Please don't believe me because this is really scary. Iago is the scariest character in any play Shakespeare ever wrote. He's, he's Hamlet gone the other way around. Mm -hmm. And actors are afraid of him. They don't want to play the tragedy of Iago. They'd rather play the farce. They play a flip Iago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I, I don't want to get up on that. Yeah. Frank Finley's backstage now. He's coming <laughs> right there. And, and then Bob Hoskins turned in a bigger <laughs> piece of crap with, with Jonathan Miller, the directing. As what? The, the, the TV version of, of, of Othello. Hoskins was a lousy... It was Iago, yeah. Holy mackerel. I mean, yeah. But you know, the greatest actors, Ralph Richardson had a total disaster in Macbeth, and he said, I never saw the dagger once. <laughs> <laughs> i got to tell you this quickly. Jackie Gleason's father abandoned him as a kid. He spent almost his whole life looking for him. I asked a comedy writer once, who's the worst schmuck you ever worked with? He said, Jackie Gleason, a famous comedy writer. One day, a bunch of writers were sitting around outside Gleason's office. i got to get this story in. And he kept him waiting and waiting and waiting for hours. And one of them said, finally, to hell with it, I'm leaving. And the lady said, what shall I tell Mr. Gleason? And he said, tell him, tell him his dad dropped by. All his life, he had looked for his father. Isn't that a cruelly wicked thing to yeah. say? Now, a comedy writer who can come up with that is certainly worth his money and shouldn't be lost right. to the staff. <laughs> Another star had very bad scars from smallpox, and somebody said to him, Bob, what's par for your right cheek? It took me a moment to get it. Well, James Earl Jones, we certainly haven't covered your life entirely, but... Uh, no, I wouldn't want to do that yet. No, and yeah. it, because it isn't entirely over. <laughs> Will you say hello to your son, Flynn, who I, I hear you've allowed to grow up into a large person now from the way I remember him? Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's, he's a tall and high, Flynn. Ask him if he remembers the funny guy who knew him when he was a kid. Flynn remembers, remembers Dick, Dick Cabot, of course, yeah. Hey, you, you went right in there, you better yeah. tell him. Yeah, hi, Flynn. This is Dick. Remember Dick? No. <laughs> James, thank you. There's no thank way you. to thank you enough. And uh, we'll see. Uh, where are you? Oh, there you are. You keep moving. We'll see you next time.